be a con uh, concrete example of what we mean by this notation. These, I guess, square brackets. Um, let's try out the floor of maybe 5.7, let's say. So we do 5.7 here. Now, floor function is sometimes called the greatest integer function. So we're doing the floor of 5.7, and it returns the greatest integer less than the input argument. Now, that, that language is a little twisty, but uh, let's be more, let's just write down what's going on here. So this is equal to 5, because 5 is the greatest integer that's less than 5.7. Okay, so let's write down 5 here. Okay. Now, another way to look at this is that's this is if and only if definitional almost. Um, five is less than or equal to and this really is the definition or one definition I suppose. Uh, five point six. and strictly less than six, or excuse me, uh, what is that, 5.7? So uh, 5.7 here, so I got a smaller marker, that's okay though. Okay, 5.7 is less than six, okay? And that's literally the definition of a floor function. It's, it's all the numbers that are trapped between the floor and then the next highest integer, okay? And so uh, we are doing fine. Now, uh, so let's just take a look at the equation that we're trying to prove here. We're trying to find out when the floor of the cube root of x is equal to the floor of the square root of x. And what we do is we can establish a couple of lemmas that make this very easy to do. You don't have to do all this case analysis or anything. Now, let me just give you an idea where this lemma comes from. You can see how if you take the cube root all the way across right here, you get 4 is less than or equal to the cube root of This is just an example to make you trust the lemmas here. The cube root of 2,000. Okay, and then strictly less than 5. Right? And you can see that's just piggybacks on this very fundamental definition of what it means, what the floor function actually means. Uh, if you're an integer, or if you're a real number between 5 and its successor, the floor is going to be 5. Okay, that's it's that simple. And so this is just a more general truth right here. And so we have established, hopefully you believe this lemma right here. Notice the connection here. This is cube root and cubing, right? They're inverse functions. And there's an understood 2 right there. It gets left out a lot for square root, but there's an understood index of the radical of 2, which explains this definition of what it means for k to be the floor of the square root of x. Now, uh, the rest of it's very straightforward. Uh, just moving right along, um, this is obvious without even looking at the lemmas, right? The only way the cube root of x and the square root of x could have a floor of 0 would be if x were trapped between 0 and 1. Again, uh, the cube root of a number between uh, 0 and 1 is still a number between 0 and 1, so you're going to have a floor of 0. Okay, now right here, you'll notice what we've done here. This is 2 cubed right here, and we're just applying the lemma without having to really think about it too much. Okay, that's 2 cubed, and of course, this is 2 squared right here. Notice that they overlap on the interval from 1 to 4, so I'll just write that down, from 1 to 4. So you know that's going to be part of the solution set? Yeah, you're familiar with this notation. This means all the numbers greater than one, including one, and then strictly less than four. That's called a closed open interval. And again, this represents the intersection of these two intervals, right? Okay, now let's move down here. Now, again, you'll recognize this, what this one down here, I'm just doing a few of these, this is three squared, right? And again, we're just 
using this result right here, okay, to save us some think time. So nine is equal to three squared. But notice that um, notice that the overlap of these two intervals, you see eight runs up almost all the way to nine. And so right here, your overlap or your intersect interval for a floor level of two would be eight uh, closed open nine. So, so far, the, the solutions are, and let's go ahead and write this as 0 to 1 right here. And so far, we see that the solution is the union, is the union of these three intervals so far, right? The union of the interval from 0 to 1, I'll put a U here. So I don't have to rewrite it, and then a U right here, right? So that's that's what's happening so far. Now let's run along to floor level of three here. Okay, the floor level of three. Notice that there is no overlap between these two. Um, this entire interval is much less than this entire interval. So we can put empty set right here. Okay, no the vacuous intersection, right? Okay, the intervals do not overlap. So uh, this part uh, right here, from zero to one, union with one to four, okay, uh, close zero, open one, union with close one, open four, union with closed eight, open nine, uh, is the solution set to uh, this original, we don't have it all on the same screen, but the, of, of this of this floor equation, y'all. And just again, the, the power of these, this is, call this lemma one if you want to, call this lemma two, we just use those repeatedly to establish these conditions. And notice we don't have to go any further, both the cubing function, the cube root function and the squaring function are increasing functions, right? So we can certainly anticipate this being um, the empty set for all the floor levels greater than or equal to three, okay? And I'm not, that's, that maybe that's not rigorous enough for some of you, but it is for me. And um, let's see. Also, we started at zero because, um, you know, you don't have to worry about negatives because the square root of a negative number is an imaginary number and the cube root of a negative number is a real number. And so we just, uh, you know, naturally start at zero because of the nature of the functions here. Now, the, you could have these type of setups where uh, if these were, like if we were doing maybe the cube, the, the cubed root of um, x and the fifth root of x, then you would have to, you would be getting negative numbers also probably in a symmetrical sort of fashion, okay? But if you have an even index here and an odd index here, you necessarily are gonna have a domain of, of uh, x greater than or equal to zero. But anyway, uh, that's that, hope you enjoyed it.